Hi, and welcome to another message by me. This week uh, was going to be a message on healing, but I'm going to defer that until next week because Thursday morning of this past week, about 3.30 in the morning, sometimes this happens to me, but I was awakened, I have to say, by the good Lord himself, and the message that I'm going to be delivered affects everybody under the sound of my voice. I don't care what religion you are, I don't care if you're male, female, young person, old person, I don't care if you're, uh, you live in Hawaii, I don't care where you live on this planet, what I'm about to say is going to affect you personally in the next probably few years, in the next very few years. So you can see the headline up above me in my lush studios here. We're talking today about Bible prophecy and world news headlines that are happening today. Now I brought a message on prophecy before, but I have to bring this one again, but for a different reason, because the headlines of today are, are rapidly matching the prophecy of the Bible. So if I don't tell you and send up a warning, that's when you see the blue and red flashing lights going on in the monitor. This is a severe warning, like a storm warning would be. And you can ignore it and suffer the consequences, or you can continue to listen and you evaluate and say, well, John Tyler and his Bible and all that stuff, they're all out to lunch and I don't care. Okay, but when it happens, and it's going to happen in the next few years, you will think back on this time and you'll say, what did he say? I can't, I can't remember, but I know we're in a pickle. So here we go with today's message, which is headlines and Bible prophecy and how the headlines are really rapidly, I'm talking about unbelievable speed, uh, bringing us to the conclusion of what you know as living here on the planet. God's closing the curtain down. John, you're scaring me. Well, that's the consequence, I guess, but what should be scaring you is, and this is why I don't really care what religion you say you are or you claim to be, it doesn't matter. Because what I would do, if I were you, as the things begin to unfold that I'm going to tell you about, it's all in this Bible. So if you have a Bible at home, and 97% of you across the world claim to believe in God, and you claim to have a Bible, I don't care if you're Jewish, go in the Old Testament, it doesn't make any difference. But when the prophecy of these things unfold before your very eyes, and I'm about to tell you what it is, start paying attention, and I would start going to any church in the planet that you choose that preaches this prophecy because this must be the truth if it was written 4,000 and then 2,000 years ago, and today, in the year 2012, 13, 14, 15 through 17. Everything I'm telling you now, in my opinion, is going to come to a conclusion between 2015 and 2017. Don't think I've ever said that before, but I'm pretty, pretty sure. Oh, John, you know, so many times across uh, my lifespan, somebody's always running up to a bridge or a mountain and saying, sell everything and because the Lord's coming tomorrow. You know, I've heard the same thing. But the difference is, all of these headlines didn't happen then that confirm what is in the Bible. Nonetheless, it's my job to throw up the warning flashing lights and say, this is what's coming down. Pay attention or don't pay attention. It's entirely up to you. Life is full of choices. Okay, let's go to something that is known before I get to what is now coming true called biblical prophecy and how it affects you. From Abraham, the time of Abraham, when he was married to Sarah, God said to Abraham, I'm going to give you a child, and his name you will call Isaac. Now, Isaac will have a son, his name will be called Jacob. God says, I will change his name from Jacob, which means the supplanter, the, the tricky, sneaky guy, to Israel. That is when the nation of Israel and the Jewish religion, if you will, was born through Jacob, son of Isaac, son of Abraham. So Abraham is the father of the nation of Israel. 
on the one hand. He's also your father, and if you're an Arab, doesn't make any difference, he's also your father. God said, I will make you father of many nations, which he really meant all nations. So let me go back to Sarah. Sarah and Abraham would not wait for God's promise to deliver a son. So Sarah said, look, I'm old, you're old, this isn't going to happen. Why don't you use my handmaiden, who is an Egyptian handmaiden that we got when we were in Egypt, which is also where God didn't tell him to go to Egypt. He went there during a famine, he Abraham. And when he went off God's path, he got himself into a pickle. Well, one of the pickles he got himself into was he picked up Hagar, which was his wife Sarah's handmaiden, an Egyptian, an Arab, if you will. And in today's uh, vernacular, we'll say an Arab, Muslim, Islamic woman. Okay, so his Hagar, Abraham goes to bed with her. They conceive a son 13 years before Isaac is born. That son's name is Ishmael. So, now we've got a problem. We've got where the Bible says to Abraham, Ishmael and Isaac, both of these are going to be at war with one another from now until I come. Way in the future, maybe 2015. All right. The Arabs are going, and Ishmael, I'm going to read about him because it's important for you to know. His lineage, everyone that came through him, is always at enmity with not only the nation of Israel, they hate their guts, but they're at enmity, at odds, that you are their enemy. You, if you do not worship Allah, it's part of the Islamic fundamentalist faith, then you are an infidel and you are, well, I'll show you what will happen right out of their Bible. Okay, so it is written in the Bible, I'm telling you, that Ishmael's descendants will always be at war with Israel and, the Bible says, they will also fight uh, well, let me just read it to you. If we go to Genesis chapter 16, verse 11 and 12, it says this. An angel from God appeared before Hagar when she was about to conceive Ishmael. And the angel says to her, you are now pregnant and you are going to give birth to a son. You are to name him Ishmael, which means God heard you. He heard your cry of distress. So his name will become Ishmael. However, let me also give you a warning, Hagar. This is what is going to happen with your son Ishmael, the Arab, Islamic, Muslim lineage of Ishmael. Ishmael and his descendants, this is what's going to happen. This son of yours, the angel said, will be a wild man, as untamed as a wild donkey. He will raise his fist against Everyone. Who did he say he would raise his fist against? Everyone. Jew, Gentile, every, even his own people. He will fight. Let me continue. And everyone will be against Ishmael. Yes, he will live in open hostility even against all his own relatives. His relatives were his half-brother Isaac, who was Jewish, and all of his own relatives, what this means is this. And you've seen it in today's headlines, in the news, that Muslims are killing Muslims. They both share the Islamic faith. Yet, the Sunni Muslim sect is killing, and vice versa, the Shiite Muslim sect. And just for your information, because I'm just a wolf of useless information, the Sunni uh, sect of Islam, which is 1.9 billion people now, 90% of Islam is uh, are Sunni Muslims. The 10% or the minority of the Islamic faith are Shiites. However, let me point out that 89% uh, of Iranian Muslims, you know, Iran, the ones building a nuke to destroy Israel, 89% of them are Shiites, so they're in the minority of the Islamic faith. 
and you'll see why they're killing each other in just a moment. So 60% of Iraqis were and are Shiites. They're also arranged in, and I'm going by the predominance of the people who live in these countries, are Shiite Muslims. Yemen, ever hear of that? It's in the news every day now. All the terrorist training camps, the ones where they're sending these uh, drones to wipe them out. They're uh, settled in uh, Yemen. They're in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, the oil capital of the world. Saudi Arabia, Mecca. That's the number one uh, holiest shrine in the world for Islam is in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Number three is on Mount Zion in Israel the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Let me keep going. You've heard of Hezbollah. That's the ones that's totally uh, fighting against Israel. Hezbollah is, uh, I don't know what the percentage is, let's say 99% Shiite Muslims. Okay. The other end of the spectrum, the Sunni Muslims, are predominantly found in the Taliban. Have you heard those in the news? Yes, you have. The Taliban is in uh, Afghanistan and elsewhere. And also, I know you've heard of this group it's called Al-Qaeda. That is mostly Sunni Muslims. So now you get it. And the Sunnis, Al-Qaeda means the base, by the way. That's what Al-Qaeda means. The base. What base? That is the, the they, they look at themselves as though they are the foundation of Islam. And they're the ones that are jihadists. They're waging war against everyone who does not believe in Allah, including uh, they hate the Shiites, the Sunnis hate the Shiites, and are killing each other with bombs and you name it, whatever. Um, and you wonder, why, why, is, why are they fighting against each other? Because one group, the minority, does not believe in certain things about what the Prophet Muhammad said, and uh, Mohammed lived on the earth between 570 A.D. and 632 A.D. when he died. But let me tell you, out of the book of uh, Al-Bukhari, uh, volume 4, number 196, it reads this way, from the prophet Mohammed, which is 90% of the Sunnis subscribe to everything that Mohammed said. So let me read that. He said in the book of al-Bukhari, and that way you'll understand what's going on in the planet now, Islam is to be imposed by force. I'm reading from their book. Islam is to be imposed by force, Muhammad said. I, Muhammad, have been ordered to fight with people until they say, nobody has the right to be worshipped but Allah. And if this book of al-Bukhari continues to say, and if we can get somebody to agree with us and come over to Islam, then their life and their property will be protected. If not, then their life and their property will not be protected. Some of the Shiites, as I say, they don't subscribe to what the Prophet Muhammad said, especially about some of the imams. That's another story. I won't get into it. But this is why they keep fighting. And why they keep fighting is because in the book of Genesis, I just read to you out of chapter 16, is that Ishmael and all of his Arab descendants will be fighting not only the Jews, but they'll be fighting each other and everybody else on the planet. I'll go through it again. Yes, he will live in open hostility against all his relatives. He will be as untamed as a wild donkey, he will raise his fist against everyone. Al-Bukhari. Anyone who does not believe in Allah will be either killed, or their property will be taken, or they will be cast in jail, or whatever. And, they, and Islam is to be imposed by force on the population of the earth. So now you know how everybody feels. The Jew, the Arab, you, the Christian, the Gentile, whatever your religion, whatever your country is, it doesn't make any difference. This is the history behind what's in the Bible. So, now, you know where it all originated with Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and uh, his son Jacob, Israel, and then with Ishmael. Okay, let me move on. 
So that news has been with us since the very beginning of time, essentially. Genesis, let's say it's 4,000 years ago. So since then, in Abraham, this conflict has always been going on. But here's the part for today's news that affects you, my brother, and you, my sister. Regardless of who you are, this will affect you. I'm pointing at you because I want the warning lights to go off again. This is going to affect you very, very soon. Look in my eyes. Soon. And you'll know when it's coming because I'm going to tell you when it's coming. Because I get it out of the Bible. I'm not some guru. I'm not some guy that gets all these, you know, dreams from God and all that stuff. It's right here in the Bible and it's right in my headlines today. Let me continue. So I want to focus on Bible prophecy today because it's going to affect you in the very near future. Here's part of the prophecy that I'm talking to you about. Matthew. Jesus was alive and well in Matthew chapter 24 and he was talking to his apostles. And he said this, this is going to happen, he said, and I quote, then you, he's talking, you Christians, you who follow after me, Jesus Christ, you Christ followers, let's just say then you Christians, will be handed over to be persecuted and be put to death and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. What's his name? Jesus. Does anybody in the planet hate Christians these days? Let's find out. Why don't I just go to this headline? I'll pull it up for you. Gunmen kill 19 Christians during a Nigerian church service. Nigeria is the part on that map behind me over there in the bottom in yellow. All the yellow are the hot spots, if you will. Uh, Iraq, Iran, um, and Nigeria. This is what they're talking about. So 19 gunmen, uh, excuse me, gunmen surrounded, I'll read it to you. Uh, the attack targeted a deeper life church in the town of whatever, in Nigeria. And it says, bloodstained the floors of the church as police and soldiers surrounded it Tuesday morning. Witnesses said it was unclear how many people were wounded in the attack. Monday night, but the gunmen surrounded the church in the middle of a worship service and opened fire with their Russian-made Kalashnikov assault rifles. And they killed 19 people there, including the pastor of that church. Now, let me tell you about Nigeria. It's in Africa. You say, well, what's that got to do with uh, Islam or Muslims. Well, I have to tell you that most of Africa, because of the wealth that's there in oil, uh, gold, diamonds, especially on the west coast of Africa, they're all being taken over the, politically by Islamic jihadist fundamentalists. So now you understand Africa is going the same way as the Middle East, the Sudan. It's all being taken over by Muslim extremists. So, let me continue on uh, with another pastor here, Pastor Youssef, you might have heard about since 2010. Pastor Youssef was taken into custody in Iran. These are Shiites now. They're not Sunnis, but it doesn't make any difference because they hate anybody that does not worship Islam and Allah. Okay, so he decided to get out of Islam and become a Christian. Somehow he met the Lord Jesus along the way in life and he decided this is what I want. They said, you will be put to death and they imprisoned him in 2010. Now, through our State Department and other resources, Pastor Youssef was just released because of so much political pressure placed on Iran, believe it or not. They finally let the guy go. How long he's going to last, I don't know. He better get out of that country real quick. That's all. And his wife and two kids, by the way. So it says, so will Christians be persecuted? The Bible I just read to you. And you will be, you who follow after me, you Christians, will be persecuted for my name's sake. They told him, I want you to deny this Jesus Christ and come back to Islam. Or we're going to kill you. He said, I cannot deny the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord, and so i got to face the consequences. Well, 
There are some other promises that uh, God was watching over this particular preacher, and uh, he did get him free for now. So let's go a little bit further into Luke chapter 21, verse 12. And i got to rush this through as usual. Gloria, my friend, down in Pennsylvania, thank you, she prescribed water for me because I usually get hoarse by now and uh, I have to take a sip. Ah, yes. Let me continue. Luke 21, 12 says this. Before all these things happen that John is going to tell you about, which is going to be the temple being built on Mount Zion in front of your very eyes, um, before all these things happen, people, they, your enemy, shall lay hands on you and persecute you. Sounds like Matthew 24. And delivering you up to the synagogues, they're going to deliver you into prison, they're going to, you're going to be brought before kings and rulers of the earth for what? For my name's sake, the name of Jesus. They're going to condemn you. Now, I don't, I don't have to prove this to you, but you cannot bring your Bible however big or small, to work anymore in the United States of America. It offends some people. So now your religious freedom has been taken away from you and you let it happen. In November, you have a choice. Go vote for Romney or Obama. And I'm not telling you how I'm going to vote. You can probably imagine. But on the one hand, when we're talking about Islam and the Arab world, we're beholden to them for our oil. Obama says, I'm not drilling, we're just going to take it easy and coast and uh, we'll do solar and we'll do this, that and the other thing. And the other guy is saying, no, we want to be self-sufficient by the year 2020 and we want to have a uh, coalition going on between Canada, United States and Mexico and we can take care of ourselves through natural gas, clean coal, solar, wind and yes, oil that's beneath our feet. Now, Think about it. If you become energy independent from the Arab world and they have no money coming in, then they're going to be like any other third world country. And they're listening to me right now. So the price of oil will drop. The price of gas at the pumps is now four bucks in my area. And I'm upset about it because we could have handled this 15 and 20 years ago and the politicians keep sucking up to the oil companies and everybody else involved. I'm going off in a political realm. But the fact of the matter is we could handle it by not sending money to the people that want to kill us. Hello? Am I out of my mind? There is a way to fix this problem and it goes far beyond abortion or any other kind of thing that they're talking about. Is your life is at stake. But it really doesn't matter. I'm coming down now. It doesn't matter because God is the one working the strings. He puts kings in different places so he says in his Bible he's organizing the end the curtain is being drawn in front of your eyes and as soon as you see that temple being built then you come back and review this tape or whatever this video let me keep going 2 Corinthians 4 8 and 9 says this we that is he's talking about Christians now we are troubled on every side yet we're not distressed why are we not distressed because we know at least I know what's coming. I'm preparing for it. I'm already prepared for it. I know where I'm going when I die. And you can too by clicking on the link below. So I'm not distressed. I know it's coming. I'm actually glad about it because I win. I get to go to a place that's far better than this planet Earth. Uh, we are perplexed, this Bible verse says. On every side, but we are not in despair. We are persecuted. Again, I can't buy my Bible or bring it to work. By the way, this little Bible here, my original Bible that I had maybe 20 years ago, the black one over here, <laughs> it's kind of funny uh, because prior to 1962, you could read your Bible, you could bring it to school, you could pledge, the allegi uh, pledge allegiance to the United States of America, the flag, one nation under God, all that stuff's trying to get thrown out the window. But here's something, China can't stand Christians. They hate Christians. Uh, yet, this Bible, you open it right up, get this for irony. Printed in China. Look, look in your Bible. Printed in China. The ones that hate Christianity are printing Christian Bibles. It's all about the money. 
Okay, let's keep going. Let's talk about these end times that are coming right now. Matthew 24, as Jesus himself was sitting on the Mount of Olives, his apostles came up to him and said, Lord, when are these things going to happen? When is this end, when is the coming of the end of the age? That's the end. That's when the curtain's getting drawn by God the Father. Jesus answered them. And he says, watch out that nobody deceives you because many are going to come in my name. Many are going to claim to be me. Many are going to say they are the Messiah. They're not. And the, these people that come in my name will deceive many of you out there in my audience. You will hear of wars and rumors of war. We've certainly heard that. But see to it that you are not alarmed. Red lights, blue lights, whoop, 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 warning, it's coming. He says, don't be alarmed though because such things must happen. But the end is still uh, to come. Nation will rise against nation. See that map behind me? They're all killing each other. And this past week, news headline for you, the United States of America embassies and other embassies like the German embassy are being attacked by who? Irish guys? No. They're being attacked by Islamic fundamentalist extremists. So folks, that is the religion coming in the world according to this Bible too, by the way. Everyone thought it was going to be the Roman uh, Catholic Church. No. Islam is going to be the preeminent and predominant religion in the planet. Coming up soon, they're going to be running your American and European court systems through this Sharia law. It's coming. I'm telling you, it's coming. And they will punish Christians and persecute Christians using Sharia law. Just thought I'd tell you what's coming your way. So you should be prepared. Warning lights. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. I'd say that there were earthquakes everywhere now. Japan, uh, Indonesia, Mexico. There's earthquakes everywhere across the earth now. And it says, and there will be famines in various places along the earth. The Sudan, the Africa is totally in famine all the time. United States of America, out west, this year, 2012, has had drought all throughout the Midwest, all the way to California. No rain. Wonder who's orchestrating that? Who's in charge of rain? Is that going to affect food prices? Absolutely. Can a famine happen that way? Absolutely. The Bible says it's coming anyway. All of these things that unfold, this Bible verse says, that's the beginning of birth pains. As you know, before a child is delivered, much pain happens. So the mother of that child gets all these warnings that something is about to happen, like the birth or the completion, if you will, of that conception that happened. That completion is going to happen. But before that happens, much pain is coming. And it's evident because you feel the pain. God says no different here. You will feel the pain. You will see it coming. Then it says, verse 9, you will be handed over to be persecuted. You Christians, he's talking about. And put to death and you will be hated by all nations because of my name the name of Jesus. Verse 10. This is why I like Luke. He's talking about that temple I keep bugging you about. At that time, many will turn away from the faith when all this stuff starts to happen and uh, Christians begin to get persecuted. A lot of Christians would just say, geez, I better stay away from that thing. I better, you know, I better not go to church. I better lay low because I don't want to get persecuted. It said that that's going to happen anyway. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate one another. And many false prophets are going to appear to deceive many people, like it said in Matthew. But I have to keep going because the temple's coming up. Because of the increase of wickedness in the earth, I'd say that's been happening, especially in the past 15 or 20 years. Uh, because of that wickedness, the love of many, he's talking about Christians and others, will grow cold. People will become just, get out of my way. What's, what I want, I want, I'm going to take it. They're becoming stone cold. But the one who stands firm to the end, who stands on the Lord Jesus Christ, will be saved. Click on the link below and you'll find out what I'm talking about. 
And this gospel of the kingdom of heaven will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the other nations, and then the end will come. I have news for you, my friend. It's already preached in the entire earth, so we're not waiting for that to happen. We're right here now. Then the temple will be built. Luke 21, 16. So when you see standing in the holy place, that is Mount Zion, in the temple, the abomination that causes desolation, translated, when you see standing in the temple, the one who's going to desecrate the temple that's not there yet, when you see that happen, that is spoken of through the prophet Daniel in chapter 7, let the reader understand, or in this case the viewer, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, so forth and so on. He's telling them, scatter because it's coming soon. For then there will be great distress, distress unequaled from the beginning of the world. Whatever you saw, the flood in Noah's time, not going to equal what's coming, folks, when God releases seven angels and they start uh, letting all hell break loose on this earth, which I told you about. The Christians will be gone uh, in what's called the rapture. Then, that's the first 42 months or three and a half years is going to be uh, kind of peaceful. So expect that to be coming in the next few years. There will be peace and prosperity. There will be a, a treaty signed with Israel after they blow the beans out of Iran and a preemptive strike. Then they'll build their temple. But all of this stuff is, going to be, is being set up to cause peace on the earth for three and a half years or 42 months, predicted up in Daniel's book. Um, but this devastation, unequal from the beginning of the world, would take everybody out, including Christians. But verse 22 of Luke 21 says, if those days of pain and uh, God's wrath on the earth had not been cut short by 42 months or three and a half years, Nobody would survive. Nobody. But for the sake of the elect, that's those who have chosen to, to um, accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But for their sake, those days of seven years of tribulation is going to be shortened. Everywhere I read it says shortened by three and a half years or 42 months. Uh, that time, if any one of you says to you, look, here's the Messiah, there he is, don't believe it. Because it's a lie. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders on the earth, which you have not seen yet. So that's coming too. Jesus ends it by saying this, See, I have told you ahead of time, and I'm telling Johnny Boy over here to go read all the stuff in the Bible that I wrote, so he can tell you, because you're being complacent, and you're burying your head in the sand, and you're saying, I don't want to hear this, I'd rather go hide somewhere, and then if it happens, it happens, then I'll pay attention. Warning signs, that's it. Warning, warning, warning. That's all I'm giving you. I love you. I have nothing against you, but I'm here to deliver what I know to be true, and the headlines are providing me with the rest of the story that coincides with God's prophecy. Now, Luke 21, 12 through 28 says this. Here's where it comes to uh, fruition. He says the same thing, before all this, they're going to seize you, persecute you, so forth. You will be betrayed by your own parents, your brothers and your sisters, your relatives and your friends, and some of them even will cause you to be put to death. That is at a time when the, the real famine hits the earth and everyone has to be mocked on the back of the hand or in the forehead with one of these microchips that identify everybody in the earth and it also identifies that you will be beholden to this one called the Antichrist and you will have to worship him or have your head removed. Some people are going to choose to have their head removed and they're not going to take the mark. That's what he's talking about right here. Some of you will be put to death. Everyone will hate you because of my name, Jesus said, but not a hair of your head will be will perish. Stand firm and you will win life. This is as he takes Christians out of the earth and that 42 month period after the prosperity takes place. The treaty is broken with Israel. They desecrate the temple. We're gone right after that. When, here's the key. When you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies, he's talking about 
Arab Islamic armies will surround Jerusalem. Why? Because I've told you before, but I'll say it again. Before Israel can build the temple on Mount Zion, they have to kick out all the Arabs from Jerusalem and from Israel. How do they do that and what gives them the authority and the right to do that when they do a preemptive strike on the Arab world, which may include Syria and definitely Iran because Ahmadinejad is provoking them to do it. He has one lifestyle, go one lifetime goal, that is to evict Israel, demolish them, kill them, wipe them out and drive them into the sea. There's no amount of money, there's no amount, you could give him 70 virgins and a hundred billion dollars right now and he'd say, no, my goal is to usher in the 12th Imam, and then I'll gain more favor that way with the Imams and with Allah and so forth. So he's driven to absolutely finish his job, get the nukes developed, which he'll never do, and then try to wipe out Israel, which God already said isn't going to happen. So Ahmadinejad, if you're all watching this, it isn't going to happen. So here we go. When you see Jerusalem being surrounded by the Arab armies, this is, then you will know that its desolation, that is Israel and Jerusalem, will be desolated. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, run, 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 uh, for this time of punishment is in fulfillment of all that has been written in this Bible, Old Testament, prophets, Isaiah, Daniel, David in the Psalms, they all promised and testified and prophesied that this day that I speak of is coming and coming soon. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. There will be great distress in the land and wrath against this people. He's talking about Israel, wrath against Israel. They will fall by the sword, Israel and will be taken as prisoners and sent to all nations by Islamic, Muslim, Arabs. Jerusalem, this is why I know it's Israel. In uh, Luke 21 and verse 22, Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles. The Arabs are Gentiles, because anybody that's not a Jew is a Gentile. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And that is when Jesus comes back, takes the saints with him to be in heaven for three and a half years while the angels cream the earth with all kinds of punishments, which you can read about in Revelation chapter 12 through 20. Oh boy, I hope you don't mind bearing with me because if this is going to be happening to you, no matter how long it takes, I'd want to know. So, if you'll finish this with me, it'll only take a few more minutes. I've only got actually one more verse to read, Luke 21, 27. It says this, At the time that the temple that's not built yet will be desecrated, that means it's built, and then they go in there and desecrate it, then at that time, the Bible says in Luke 21, 27, they will see the Son of Man, that's Jesus, coming in a cloud, which he hasn't done yet, with power and great glory. He's coming to take his elect back to heaven with him, while God allows the seven angels to absolutely render chaos and judgment upon those who remain in the earth. And even at that point, they'll go through pain, but a remnant of Israel, 144,000 Jews to be exact, will be spared, and they will already know the Messiah came all right, and they'll be out preaching the gospel to those who remain, and those who remain will either take that mark on their hand, or they'll say, all right, I want to accept the Lord as my Savior. And if they do that, then the Bible says then they will also be spared and their spirit will also go to heaven. Then three and a half years after that, we'll all come back with the Lord. He'll set his foot on Mount Zion and as he promised in the Old Testament, the Messiah that said, I will come and reign as king in Jerusalem will happen then and that'll happen for a thousand years. So he said, when these big things begin to take place, Stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption, which means I'm taking you out of here, draws near. Now, 
you say, John, I think you're, there's a bunch of other verses here, but I'm going to skip them for lack of time. But I want to get to the point of the temple being built on Mount Zion. John, I don't believe you. It hasn't happened now in 2,000 years since 70 AD, August 4th, but who's counting, when the other one was destroyed by Rome. And at that point, you know, soldiers surrounded, they were Roman, surrounded Jerusalem and devastated the place, and so that's all the same. But as I pointed out before, the only thing different is the third temple has to be built, and the only thing different between 70 AD and, in my opinion, 2015 to 2017, when that temple is done and built and then desecrated and the Lord comes and takes everybody away, the only thing different is the Bible says in Luke 21, 27, when you see these things happen, that temple being built and being desecrated, look up for the Son of Man is coming in the clouds. Well, that didn't happen. I mean, I'm guessing, because I'm still here. And if you're a Christian, you're still here. So we know it didn't happen. But it's going to, and none, the preachers across America, and I'm not a preacher, believe me, but they, they're not talking about this because they're all gun shy. It's like, well, it hasn't happened yet, so it's probably not going to. But Jesus says, you're not, no man knows the day or the hour, but you will know the season. And he says, when these things happen, look up. And I'm trying to tell you that Islam, Arab world, Israel, uh, Israel does a preemptive strike on the Arab world, Iran, maybe Syria, like I say. Then Israel has every right and authority because they have the weapons and the power and they just devastated Iran in your near future. I'm talking that's going to happen within months from now. No, months. And when it happens, you'll see what I'm saying. Then the next thing Israel's going to do is vote for putting in the temple. John, we don't believe you're gonna, that they're going to build a temple there. Well, let me get this article off for you then, because see, current events and Bible prophecy seem to merge. Somehow God actually knows that this is the time and the season, and these things are going to happen. This is, this, uh, Na National News Service says this. I'm giving you a headline. Muslims, not you, not John Tyler, Muslims claim that Israel is planning to build on the Temple Mount. I'll read a little bit. Uh, this was published uh, February of 2012. And it says, Israel is planning to build a new structure on the Temple Mount adjacent to the Al-Aqsa Mosque. I'm going to bring that picture up for you again now because let me see where I'm standing. Over on that side you'll see the gold dome of, it's called the, Go the uh, Dome of the Rock. That is controlled by Muslims. On that side you will see the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the third holiest shrine of all of Islam. In between the two and right where I'm sitting in front of well, I'm not, because I'm going to show you the whole picture, is the Western Wall, it's called. Uh, and the Western Wall is the Western Wall of what used to be the Temple. Off to the southern part of that, that's over to the right of the wall, is called the southern part of the Western Wall. And in that little area right in there, used to be the steps leading up to the Temple. So if there is that Temple to be built, that's where it's going to get built. You'll also see trees behind the Western Wall, which is called the Wailing Wall, most popular and holy site of all of Jerusalem. And it's only, I think, uh, I forget how many feet long. It's not that long, 187 feet maybe. Um, but, but that's where <clears throat> the temple is going to be built, that Muslims claim that Israel is planning to build. Um, the report cited the Al-Aqsa, that is Islamic, Foundation for Endowment and Heritage, which claimed that a committee within the Israeli municipality of Jerusalem has already submitted plans for the new structure. Let me go to uh, something else here for a moment. Oh, why, well, here's something here. It says, you ready for this? I'm not kidding you. It says, headline, Third Temple in Jerusalem plans to be built, rebuilt. 
Uh, the third temple plans for rebuilding in Jerusalem, and it shows what the temple will look like. I'll put that up on the screen behind me, or behind me. It says in the headlines, they could start building tomorrow. There are 12 groups that are in preparation already to build this temple that John Tyler kept saying they're going to build. They've chosen the location, a computer registry of 300,000 of the sons of Aaron, that is the Levi priests, uh, are already in place and their robes, 300,000 of them are already prepared. Over 150 sacred vessels have already been restored. You tell me they're not building and they're not planning to build? Including some of the most difficult and complicated projects, such as the menorah and the precious stones of the high priest's breastplate. The architects have already selected to rebuild with plans according to the Bible. But, all but the Ark of the Covenant, which they believe is there, also need to be a pure red heifer. Blah, blah, blah. The Ark of the Covenant is in heaven already, so they're never going to find it. All they had to do was read the Bible. But anyway, the plans are in place. Everything is done. Everything is prepared. Every artifact for the temple is ready. The priest's clothing, the Levite priest's clothing is done. All of the sacred things that need to be built are built and prayed over. And they're ready. The only thing they lack now is getting rid of the authority that Islam has now on Mount Zion. And then the temple would be built. Now let me quickly end this by reading Psalm 83. This is David, King David, talking about the sons of Ishmael in particular and how they have enmity against the Jews and how they want to kill all the Jews. And of course we're talking about now persecuted Christians. But I want to go back to show you that their goal has never changed in 4,000 years since David... Um, penned these words, Psalm 83. He's talking to the Lord and he pens this out. O Lord God of heaven, Jehovah, don't keep silent, don't hold your peace, and don't be still, O God, for your enemies, your enemies, that is those who have not relied upon you, God, Jehovah, and now Jesus, your son, and they that hate you have lifted up their head in pride, they have taken crafty counsel against your people of Israel, and they consulted against the hidden ones. They have said, <coughs> here we go, Gloria. They have said, come and let us cut them off, Israel, from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. David wrote this. Ahmadinejad basically quotes this. I'm going to purpose in my heart to annihilate the Jews and push them into the sea and remember them no more. Exactly the same thing that David said they were planning then, they're planning right now. For they have consulted together with one consent, the entire Muslim, Arab, Islamic, clerics, politicians, leadership, have consented with one consent and they are all confederate against you which means against Israel. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab have done this which means the Ishmaelites are those descendants of Ishmael, Hagar's son that we talked about earlier. And finally in Isaiah chapter 2 Verse 2 and 3, also found in the Jewish Bible, it says this, And it shall come to pass in the last days, that's now, folks, I'm just warning light, warning light, warning light, it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain, that's Mount Zion, of the Lord's house, that's the temple, shall be established on the top of the mountain, and it shall be exalted above all the hills, and all the nations shall flow to it. You will also see this happen, my dear friend. Once Israel begins to build the temple, the Jews from Florida, New York, I don't care where they live, guess what? They're going home, baby, to be right where that temple of holy God is being built. You know they're all going to migrate there. Okay, let me continue because the Bible is prophesying that this will happen. Verse 3 of Isaiah 2. And many people shall go and say, Come! 
and let us go to the mountain of the Lord, whether you're in Miami-Dade, Florida, or you're in New York or California, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, Mount Zion, to the house of the God of Jacob, that is the temple, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. This is what uh, Israel thought back in the book of Isaiah. So out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Now, this is also going to affect Christianity because Jesus says, I'm coming back. I'm going to be the king of Jerusalem. I'm going to reign with the saints for a thousand years. I'm going to lock Satan up in the prison of hell for that thousand years. Then I'm going to let him loose and China and Russia are going to come down against me, Jesus, and Jerusalem, and my Father, God, is going to rain down fire from heaven and destroy them all. And then we all go up for the great white throne judgment. That is, you people that are not saved and have not trusted the Lord as your Savior by clicking on that link below. You're going to be judged by God, and then He's going to instruct His angels to cast all those who did not believe on His Son into that lake of fire. Just saying, don't get mad at me, I'm only the messenger. And I'm finally going to leave you with this, Revelation 11, 1 and 2. And it says, And there was given to me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood next to me, saying, Rise, and measure with that rod the temple of God, the one that's not there yet, and the altar of them that worship therein. Measure, go measure the stuff. In other words, uh, we're going to measure it because Jesus is now coming to take over and cleanse that temple where he will rule in it. But the court that is outside of the temple, leave that out of it and don't measure it because it is given unto the Gentiles, the non-Jews, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot for 42 months. The prediction is 42 months, three and a half years, saints are gone, here's the temple, measure it up, get it ready, I'm going to know what's going on when I set foot on Mount Zion and rule again. But between the time I take my saints to heaven, that is anybody that clicked on John Tyler's link or who have trusted the Lord as their Savior, they're gone. Now, did you see, hear, read what I just said? In the holy city of Jerusalem shall they, Islam, when they surround Jerusalem and desecrate the temple, and they will tread it underfoot for 40 two months. It spells it out in the Bible. I didn't make this stuff up. That's three and a half years. That's the last half of the tribulation. Then the Lord comes back with the saints. He rules and reigns in Jerusalem, so forth and so on. So that's it. I fired up the warning shot. I'm telling you what the Lord says in his Bible. I'm telling you what the headlines say. The only thing missing is the crucial part for you to believe finally is Israel is going to do a preemptive strike on Iran, kick the Arabs out of Jerusalem and Israel. When that happens, they will begin to build their temple. You heard it right here first on stupid little YouTube. But it's all true, folks, so deal with it however you want to. I know where I'm going, and if you don't, maybe it's time to click on that link and discover what you need to do to make sure that you're not here during that last 42 months because all hell literally will break loose. I'll see you next week and hopefully I'll bring that message about healing because there are a lot of charlatans on TV. Hey, buy this bottle of uh, holy oil and put it on your forehead and this will heal you and all your kids and anybody that you come into contact with just send $15 and you know, uh, shipping and handling is extra. It's crap. And then there are others that claim, let's do the healing service. Don't mean to make fun of you, but, and so I won't. I'll bring it to you next week. And you know what? I don't have all the answers yet. This is what the good Lord has been working with me on for four days this week until Thursday morning when this came to me and I had to do it. So next week I'll see you. It'll all be all about healing. What's it all about? How do you get healing? Are there any healers today other than the Lord Jesus Christ or God uh, and that type of stuff. So I'll see you next week.